Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome back to the audio programming tutorial series. Today, we're going to be putting together our very first audio program. What it's going to do is it's going to load an audio file from your computer and play it. Simple as that. But before we begin, there's just one thing I'd like to say, and this is important. I don't expect you to fully understand what this code does just yet. We will be talking about that over the next few videos, but for now, the big thing I want you to get out of this video is just get a general feel for what audio code is like. And at the end, have something interesting that you can start playing around with. So don't worry, if you feel like you're not fully grasping all the details of it, don't worry too much. That'll come in the next few videos. This is just give you a feel and give you something to play with. And as always, if you feel like the code is a little bit much, it's a little bit frustrating to work with, you can always download the code off GitHub or just get a line-by-line -line breakdown of everything I've done in this video. So just keep that in mind. And with that, let's begin. So, the first thing we're going to need is an audio file to load and some way to load it. So, I'm going to define a file path to be dot slash res slash audio slash test clip dot web. Spelled exactly like that. Capitalization is important. And this is an audio file that I've included with the project setup. You are perfectly free to use your own audio files as long as they're .wavs. And it's optional, you can change SDL and everything to an SDL and it audio, because that's all we're going to be using, but it doesn't matter, everything includes audio. Now, to load this WAV file, we're going to need a little bit of data. We're going to need an SDL audio spec, the, whoops, spec, excuse me, that I'm going to call WAV spec. And this just contains various data about the audio file, like What's the frequency? What's, how many audio channels does it have? Is it mono or stereo? Various information like that. We're also going to need a uint8 pointer. We're going to call wav start. This will be the location and memory of the wav file. And we're going to need a uint32 that I'm going to call wav length. And that'll be the length of the wav file. How big is it? And to load it, SDL has a function for that. So if SDL load wav file path and as file path of course we're gonna to need to pass in the address of wav spec because it's gonna write in all the appropriate audio information in there. We're gonna pass in the address of wav start so it can write to where it loaded it in memory and the address of wav length so it can tell us so it can write in there how long is the audio file. And if this is equal to null then there's been some error. It can't load the file for some reason. So later on, we're going to have some proper error handling system here. But for the time being, I'm just going to do SDLC error error. And then I'll say file path could not be loaded as an audio file. And how far am I? Yeah, sure, why not? I'll go ahead and break here and just say std end l. So now if I build and run, there you go, it loaded the audio file. Only thing is at the end here, we're going to want to do SDL free wav to delete it. And we're going to want to free the location of memory, so we're going to pass in wav start. And there we go, that's all there is to loading an audio file, or at least a wav audio file, with SDL. The next thing we're going to need is access to some audio device that can play our WAV file. So this can be something like speakers or headphones or whatever, just some audio device that can play audio. And SDL has a nice way to do this. There's this thing called SDL Audio Device ID that I'm just going to call device. And this is SDL's way of keeping track of all the audio devices. So we're going to gain access to some audio device that can play our WAV file using SDL open audio device, and most of the parameters to this I don't really care about. 
just going to say null, zero. I am going to pass in the address of WAVSpec here, so that way it knows what sort of audio it needs to play. And here I'm going to pass in null again. And last parameter I also care about. SDL audio allow any change. This way, if for some reason the audio device plays audio a little bit differently than the exact specification of the WAV spec, it's allowed to change that so that, you know, it matches the audio device. So, there. We should have opened the audio device here. And at the end, we're going to have to SDL close audio device, device, so that way the rest of the system can be used again. And yeah, I can finally get rid of the hello world. And I'm going to have just an if statement here. So if device happens to be equal to zero, that means we failed. There's no audio device in the system that we can access that also can play the WAV, the WAV file. So here, again, I'm going to have some this. Oh, here I'm going to return one so that we don't keep executing. And same here. I'm going to do the error a little bit differently. I'm just going to say error and this function called SDL get error. And then I'm going to say endl. So there we go. And now we have access to an audio device that can play our WAV file. So finally, the last thing we're going to need is some function that actually plays the audio. And in our case, all this is going to need to do is copy some of the audio data from our pointer to the WAV file into our audio device. So that's what we're going to write right now. But first, I'm going to create a struct just to make our lives a little bit easier that I'm going to call audio data. It's going to have some uint8 pointer for the current position of the audio and some uint32 for the length of the audio. And you'll see why I'm setting this up in a moment, but we're going to have a void my audio callback, taking in void pointer user data, and it's going to take in some uint8 pointer for stream. This is the stream of audio we're supposed to be copying into, and some int that I'm going to call stream length. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create an audio data pointer, and this is going to be called audio. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to cast user data to an audio data pointer. Whoops. And you might be wondering why I'm doing it like this, rather than just passing in user data as an audio data pointer directly. And you'll see why in a moment. But for now, let's write the function. If the audio length is zero, then we can just return. Nothing to do. We have no more audio to copy. Otherwise, we're going to need to figure out exactly how much audio data we need to copy. So I'm going to create a uint8 pointer. Wait, sorry. A uint32, no pointers here, for length. This is how much we're actually going to copy. And we're going to start this off equal to the stream length cast to it uint32. But we're going to need to do a check. So if length is more than audio arrow length, then, well, this, this audio stream is longer than the amount of audio we actually have. So if this is the case, we're just going to set it to audio length. Oh, excuse me, I got the symbols backwards. If that is the case, then it's going to be audio length. Otherwise, it can just be as it is. It can be the stream length. So good, that'll keep our audio at full. Now our length is appropriate, all we need to do is really a memory copy. So I'll do SDL mem copy from audio, wait, sorry, to the stream from the audio pause. And it's going to be the length, at length. So there. And the final thing we're going to need to do is update the audio. So that audio pause plus equals length, and audio length minus equals length. And there we go. That's all we need to do to play audio. But how do we call this function? Well, we're going to call it with the WAV spec. So first off, I'm going to set up the audio data. Right here, after I load the, the WAV file, I'm going to create audio data audio, 
In audio.pass is going to be wave start. Audio.length is wav length. Because of course we're playing the wav file. And now the wav spec, I'm going to set the callback equal to my audio callback. So this way SDL will know about our function so it can actually call it to play our audio. And we're also going to set user data equal to address of audio. So this way it knows about the audio so it can pass it in to the user data. And there. So everything's in order. All we need to do now is play the audio. So of course the function we're going to be using to play the audio is going to be called something simple and obvious. Pause. Don't ask me why they decided to call the play function pause, but they did. <laughs> so, when SDL pause audio device, we pause device, and you pass in 0 to play, 1 to pause. Not clear on why they did that, but it works. And finally, we're going to do a bit of a while loop here. While audio.length is more than 0, we're going to do SDL delay for 100 milliseconds. And the reason we need this is because otherwise it would start playing the audio and then immediately end the program. So this will just keep the program running while it's playing the audio. So with that, let's build and run and see what happens. Hello everyone, this is Benny from the past, and you are hearing an audio clip played by a computer program. So there you go, you've just heard an audio clip of my voice or whatever other WAV file you used. And there you go, that's all I wanted to cover in this video. But how does all this really work? What is really happening with the digital audio? How can we do some more interesting things with this? All will be revealed next time on the audio programming tutorial series. Hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and I'll see you then.